What's up everyone and welcome to another video straight off the bat. If you could please hit that subscribe button to help me out, that would be absolutely legendary. Today we're going to be talking about what on earth happened to pop rock. Pop rock was one of the most popular genres of the early 2000s and believe it or not guys, you may not notice it today or believe it due to the standards of today's music, but rock music used to dominate the charts 20 years ago when I was 11 years old. Good Charlotte, Blink-182, Limp Bizkit, Linkin Park, Incubus, Puddle of Mud, Stained, Avril Lavigne, Wheatus, Goo Goo Dolls, the list goes on. But today we're talking about what on earth happened to pop rock, and this isn't popular rock. For example, Limp Bizkit were a new metal band who became popular. Blink-182 were a pop punk band who became popular. That doesn't make them pop rock, it just makes them popular bands. When I talk about pop rock, I mean bands who are too rock to be a pop band, but too pop to be a straight up rock band. We're talking Goo Goo Dolls, Hooverstank, Wheatus, Busted, McFly. Goo Goo Dolls and Busted, for example, still sell out huge arenas. But pop rock used to be number one on the UK charts. It got so much airtime. The videos were constantly played on the music channels. And if you went to a festival, for example, Reading, V Festival, Coachella, Glastonbury, pop rock artists were everywhere. It was arguably one of the most popular genres within that decade. But then since about, I'd say 2008, 2009, there's been a steady decline to the point where these bands are barely recognizable by today's standards. And I'm sure some of the Generation Z TikTok kind of kids have no idea who they even are, which we will get into as that's such a good way these days for music to go absolutely viral. So one more time, hit that subscribe button and we're going to discuss what happened to these rock bands, these pop rock bands, and what happened that could possibly lead to such a decline in popularity. Number one, the resurgence of the boy band and the manufactured band. So in 2011, 10 years ago now, bands like One Direction and The Wanted and other bands such as Jonas Brothers were absolutely massive. In the years prior to this, the whole boy band, singers and dancers, it kind of really died out. It had been years since there'd been huge bands like Oizone, Westlife, Five, New Kids on the Block. And these bands, One Direction, The Wanted, and other bands who were coming up, such as Little Mix, and a bit of the Jonas Brothers as well, they kind of filled that void, that guilty pleasure for some people, or real pleasure for other people, I guess. The other thing these bands did is they had some rock influenced songs, so they filled that void as well, so there was no real need for other straight up pop rock bands. The main reason I believe this is, is that a lot of these bands have their songs written for them by professional songwriters. And where did professional songwriters get their start? A lot of the time, it's rock music. If your band from the 2000s wasn't successful, you never made it big, you never got to arena level, you never made much money, but you still wanted to work in the music industry, well, what do you do? You just get another job in the music industry. You could become a producer, you could become an A&R representative, or you could become a songwriter. And so the people who'd previously been in rock bands and pop rock bands and pop punk and punk rock bands who never made it became professional songwriters and started writing rock influenced songs for the mainstream pop bands. And therefore this pop rock genre basically transformed or transposed into just regular pop music by regular pop bands. And the problem is that pop rock has a lack of creativity. I can name countless songs which use the standard C, G, A, F, Formula. I saw an angel of that I'm sure People killing people dying children hurt Pop rock songs, there are rap songs which use this formula There are pop punk songs obviously that use this formula a lot, this chord progression And I get it, it makes sense, it sounds good, it's easy on the ears But the thing with pop rock was there was this, never this room for improvement There was never this room for it to change, to become something else Whilst other genres such as heavy metal has transformed into other genres such as death metal, metalcore With rap you've got trap, you've got emo rap, you've got gangster rap You've got grime music as well. 
With pop rock, there's this whole lack of creativity where it's almost like it hit a ceiling. It hit a wall, it hit a ceiling, whichever analogy you want to do. And it couldn't really get any bigger or any more creative than it already was. And it began to be a bit samey, a bit generic. I hate that word, but yeah, a bit generic. If you listen to some of the popular pop rock songs for the last 20 years, they all start to get a bit samey. Similar drums, similar chord progressions, similar melodies. With or without you And there just wasn't any excitement left in it. I think this is why people weren't going for it anymore. Reason number two, competition from rap. Now rap has to be the most interesting and also probably successful genre of the last 30 years. Rap has made such an impact that labels were pressuring artists to incorporate it into their music. You see this with mainstream music such as Justin Bieber and Ludacris, but also with other popular collaborations. Linkin Park and Jay-Z, B.O.B. and Hayley Williams. Now I'm not saying that they were pressured by the record label, but one band certainly was, and that band is Yumi at Six. 10 years ago, they did a song with rapper Chitty, which they were basically pressured into doing. It was a rock band that were told that they had to film a music video and create this song with a rapper, even though they didn't want to. Vocalist Josh Franceschi has commented on this before, how they actually wrote the song when they were drunk as a joke, as sort of a ripoff of the B.O.B. and Hayley Williams song. And the label were like, oh, actually, yeah, I think you should actually do this. I think you have to make this song. And they were like, what? Why? I don't want to do that. And they went with it, but it just wasn't their thing. The thing with rap music is not only do labels favor it because it is so popular, but it's also extremely easy to make. Many rappers these days have a home studio or their laptop and a keyboard, or Logic or Cubase or Reason, and they can make these beats just when they're chilling out at home. They don't have to rent a studio. They don't have to hire session musicians most of the time. They hire less musicians for the tours as well. If you've got a big band such as the Goo Goo Dolls where you've got things like violins, keyboards, percussion, xylophones, whatever it happens to be. It's more expensive to produce the music and you're getting less returns because the genre is just less popular. So when you've got this competition from rap where it's so cheap to make it, it's very popular, and people who listen and love mainstream pop music such as Nicki Minaj also really, really love rap music and the two go together hand in hand, then it's really a no-brainer for the major labels. And this is the way it has been for the last 30 or more years. This very easy, simple, straightforward, easy on the ears music that is exciting, entertaining, people can dance to it, it's very mainstream, a lot of synthesizers, a lot of computer generated music. It's the complete opposite of what a lot of rock subgenres are, and a lot of rock subgenres are very niche. Pop punk is extremely popular, but it's still a niche. Garage rock is pretty popular, but it's still a niche. Indie rock is probably one of the most mainstream rock subgenres. But again, it's still a niche. And the same thing with pop rock. Whilst rap and mainstream rap and pop and mainstream pop, they all go hand in hand. Simple to produce, easy to make, can do it from a home studio. There's less people involved, there's less time involved, there's less money involved, but the returns are so much greater. And like I said, Generation Z and even some millennials, of course, and this whole new social media TikTok lovers, they're eating it up. It's so easy for a song to go viral with these platforms now, with Instagram Reels, TikTok, social media. Before, if a song went viral, it was mostly due to it getting a lot of radio play, a lot of circulation on the music channel's soundtrack, or just word of mouth. It's not that way anymore. A song can blow up so easily just via the internet. And because this form of mainstream music has always been so popular, it's just left so much less room for the other genres even if they are pop genres, that being pop rock. It is popular rock, it is rock that is pop music, and it is pop music that is just a bit rockier. But like I said, these bands are still super popular. Wheatus and Huberstank have just gone out on a tour together, I do believe. McFly are back together, they're still crushing it. I still love the Goo Goo Dolls, you know what? John is one of my favorite songwriters of all time. Honestly, I respect that guy so much. I think he's done so much for pop rock music and for rock music in general. And they're a very incredible band who do a lot for philanthropy, but also just for people, like putting on free concerts and stuff like that, doing benefit gigs. They're just 
seem like really cool, down to earth, decent human beings. I really respect that guy. Great songwriter as well. Really knows how to write a good rock song, but also knows how to write a good ballad as well. But anyway, that's my two cents on why pop rock died out. And I do feel a bit nostalgic saying all this. I do kind of miss it a bit because I absolutely loved it at the time. I loved seeing Goo Goo Dolls be one of the biggest bands. I love seeing them on the movie soundtracks along with Blink-182 and Linkin Park. These huge, massive box office movies having a rock band on them. It was just the coolest thing. Awesome, guys. Thank you so much. One more time, hit the subscribe button and I will see you soon.